Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, sometimes a movie is so nice we get to talk about it twice, and if you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you are in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where uh, we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of entertainment industry professionals, and we pick their brain about uh, state current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and conversational fashion. And, you know, if you like how we do things around here, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that you do, because, hey, you're listening right now. Uh, please subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Give us the old five-star rating. Give us the like, whatever it takes. Uh, basically, at any platform. We're over at Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google, pretty much everywhere. And plus, we archive every single one of our episodes over at our In the C2 YouTube channel. So if you, if you can give us a like and subscribe there as well, we would absolutely appreciate it. Also, do not hesitate to check us out on social media. We're on the Facebook, we're on the Twitter, and we're on the Instagram. Uh, at where else? Where it in the seats for all sorts of fun updates. And finally, and I do dare say, most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In the Seats, in the seats.ca, for all the latest and greatest from the world of television, film, basically the moving image at large. Because if we love to write about it and talk about it, guess what? We love it when you come by and read about it and listen about it. So please pay us a visit. And you know, on the last episode, we were talking about this new movie, The Swearing Jar, which is in theaters tomorrow. And guess what? Today, on this episode, again, we're talking about The Swearing Jar, which is in theaters tomorrow. Uh, as you already know, this is a fantastic film, just uh, about love, grief, everything else in between. It's got some real emotion to it, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. We got to see it at the Toronto International Film Festival, and it is available now. It's going to be in the theaters tomorrow uh, in Toronto and pretty much all across Canada as well, so do go check it out. But... Uh, in advance of that, during the festival, because uh, you'll be able to hear it as you listen to the interview, uh, we had the chance to sit down with the star of the film, Adelaide Clemens, and just talk about uh, reading the script, getting the role, and sort of going through it all and really understanding sort of the tone of the piece and, and, and just the work in general. And uh, uh, she does a fantastic job in this. I think it's a star-making performance for sure, if you don't know who Adelaide is. Uh, already, I think you're going to, uh, before long, you, you'll you seen her in a bunch of different stuff, and she's definitely a familiar face, but she stands out really quite well in this film, and she does a great job, but again, this film is in theaters tomorrow, it's fantastic, uh, it is from director uh, Lindsay McKay, writer Kate Hewitt, stars Kathleen Turner, Patrick J. Adams, and of course, Adelaide Clemens, who you're going to about to sit and listen to our interview that we did at TIFF in a noisy restaurant, but it's still a fantastic one. Uh, enjoy the movie and enjoy our talk with Adelaide, because between you and me, it is a darn good one. But I mean, obviously, for just to kick it off officially, yeah, yeah, yeah. just thank you so much for the time today. I really appreciate it. Oh my this. gosh, of course. No, exactly. Now, congratulations on the movie. I mean, I really loved it. It's smart. It's heartfelt. It's... It feels it feels honest. It, it's not you know trying to sort of fit into any sort of trope or rule when it comes to grief and love and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like walk me through, I guess, sort of the early days of you seeing this script and going, "Wow, I want to be a part of this." I mean, I don't want to give away anything about, um, I, because I think it's important that people understand her state of mind. No, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, no. So so uh, you know, it was it was early 2021 um, and I had been, you know, like film industry had sort of gone into a, um, a lull and then um, I read the script and I was just like, I was just blown away by by the, the structure, um, the movement through time in a really interesting mm. way um, that wasn't a gimmick, it was, it was a function of the storytelling. Um, and also a, a function of the character building. I mean, it, it, to see structure kind of infer so much about character for was sure, really sure. so smart and interesting. Um, and I just loved it. And I, you know, it was one of those feelings of like, please let me do this. Please let me do this. I know I can, you know, I can bring something. So, um, yeah, I was I was so over the moon. And then and then I auditioned and met Lindsay and. 
and Kate, we were like, it was like, we totally got each other from the minute. This, this feels like the kind of movie where you need to sort of be on board and have sort of that trust in the people sort of leading the ship from the beginning. Like, how did you sort of find that, I mean, I don't want to say safe space, because it's not that necessarily that kind of movie, but just, you needed to find a real sort of sweet spot where you could be genuine, I suppose is the right word. Yeah, I mean, you know, early on, what I've learned is that the communication between the actor and the director, especially if you're, especially if you're in a lot of the movie, um, and especially if it's independent, it's, I mean, in every case it's important, but, you know, I mean, we were doing crazy days, we shot this, uh, you know, we did this in a month. Oh, wow. Um, and and there was, a, there was a, a music component that was also very time consuming, so, yeah, well, I mean, when you're in every scene, like basically every scene, yeah, and you're, much, you're yeah. running through through those days, like I just needed a shorthand with Lindsay. Yeah. So from the first meeting, I was saying um, I was I was figuring out if we can communicate, um, and that was it was pretty evident that we had the same references. We we love the same. We have the same taste, which is also like so hard to know what someone's taste is. Um, but we were talking about all the same films, and yeah, so... Fantastic. That, you know. Now, I mean, obviously, a film like this, you're not going to have rehearsal time, you're not going to have a lot of time to prep, it's just sort of run and gun, you're yeah, going to yeah. go. But talk to me about working with Kathleen, because, I mean, obviously, I can imagine that first day or two, it's like, oh my God, it's Kathleen Turner. Like, how did you sort of work past that? I mean, she really helps you work past that. She's just so... She's so down to earth. She is so direct, and um, I, I can't remember correctly, but like I think it was like I was so over the moon that she was on board, and, and then you know I reach out to everyone. I'm like, like anyone who wants to like talk or re you know rehearse, if you want to run lines, whatever. Like I love running lines, and she got on the phone straight away. Oh she wow! She was like, hi, hi, I'm Kathleen. Okay, so you know we've got a movie here, and you're like, yeah, so. She really, really did, uh, she's very disarmed. Love that. No, I mean, I've got to ask about the music component, obviously. Yeah. Like, was this sort of a, a different thing for you? Like, did you have to be oh, yeah. going I'd completely never sung blind? Before. Yeah. Really? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd never, I'd never, I'd done like one karaoke thing in a movie before, so I'd never sung. So I got, as soon as I found out I got the part, I. It was really scary for me because I, 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 I have a, w a weird relationship with my voice, you know. Um, I just, I don't know, I just didn't know if, uh, I, don't, I don't know that it's necessarily a good voice, but I was like, okay, if I can just like work on it. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I took singing lessons. I had, got, had two different singing teachers and I did singing lessons like three times a week for like the two months leading up to the movie. Wow, okay. Yeah. I mean, I've got to imagine that's yeah. a little different too because I mean, obviously you've got an accent, so I mean, you have to sing, but not necessarily with the accent at the same time. So. I mean, that's not so hard because we, in Australia we're so, we're so, you know, used to American for Pop sure, culture, for sure. Yeah, you know, no, we I mean, all it's, sing with it's the old accents. saying, right? Yeah. Like it's easy to go this way, you know, to the American accent, yeah, as opposed yeah, yeah. to go the other yeah, way. Yeah, we're so, so we're so consumer, Yeah. Yeah. Now, I mean, I'm curious for you because, I mean, obviously you've, you've got your fair share of credits underneath your belt, but I mean, like you said before, you're basically in every scene in this film. Like, is is how much? Like, is that a weight you carry, or is that a weight you want to carry? Oh my god, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love, like, I don't have to look at, like, what time I'm coming in tomorrow. I love being part of the crew. I, lo I loved this crew. I love an indie film, you know. Obviously, yeah. there are heartbreaking moments when, and not on this film, but, like, with an indie film, sometimes, you know, you're going to run out of time. And you're right. not going to get, you're not going to get that other take. And so you have to be in t super, super prepared. And, I mean, with this movie, because we, first of all, time moves in such a crazy way. Um... It, uh, sorry, that's such a stupid sentence. But like, t time, time is a, a very important part of the the structure of the story, and then you know, and then obviously we're shooting it out of order. Yeah. So I had, I just had charts, and I had, I had like emotional ch charts because I needed to know. Okay, we're running. Okay, we're doing this scene, you know, that is in this storyline, and then we're doing this scene in this storyline, but then we're going back, you know. 
you just gotta you gotta be able to kind of just go. Well, and that's unique. I mean, because obviously, like you said, you're shooting it out of order. You've got to know on what day how you're gonna feel. Yeah, I, I never, and, I never really you have to know about that. What, like, okay, that's this is the like a uh, this is kind of a. a an important scene that like a lot of uh, I don't know how that's going to feel yeah. when I shoot it so you have to sort of like act things out ahead of time to figure out how that scene's going to land if you're going to do the following scene anyway. yeah but it, it's really fun I mean I love preparing I'm a total nerd I have like you know I love it. how do you develop chemistry on a short shoot like this I mean is it just the re running lines is it just faith in the director is it just yeah. I, I think that is one of the strengths of um, a smaller budget film because you're not you're not kind of cordoned off. You're you're in it together and you're all having lunch together, like on the set. It's not a know? job. You're invested in it. It's more of a. It's I mean, like it's, it, 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 there's no pandering, right? You know, and so it's very much kind of a. There's an equality on set, there's an equality amongst the actors, there's no hierarchy, there's no special treatment. And so I think I think it's really conducive to creativity. No, I mean obviously how does it feel to sort of it feels like this is one of the first festivals that we're all kinda of back at pretty close to full yeah, speed. I mean, yeah. how does it feel for you to sort of be able to bring a movie like this oh my god to it's just so, have audiences again, you know? I just love it. I love it. I'm so happy. I'm lo I love that, you know. This is just this is a movie that's about relationships and humans and betrayal and denial and all sorts of things. But it's it's not um, it's not like taking on the the larger. Um, no, but I mean about the reason, but like the importance of community as well. You know, just sort of yeah, being able to being embrace together, that kind of spirit together. of it. Yeah, being together. I mean, it's a hard time. It's been a hard time, and yeah. there's a lot of like politics in the world right now. And I feel like, you know, I, I really I like when storytelling. Um, can just take us out of <laughs> out of the world we live in. Yeah. No, absolutely right. I mean, when I was watching this, I was struck by just, I guess, maybe sort of the natural flow of it all. And I mean, I'm curious when you're in the moment, like, do you kind of understand how well things are just flowing across screen and sort of the back and forth you have with your actors, or is that something you have to see sort of after the fact? No, you never really know how. I mean. I, I, you know, like an emotional performance is, is um, I just worked with Timothy Oliphant on a, on a job and he's so brilliant and, you know, he said like, yeah, sometimes like when you're crying, you're like, oh, I did it, you know, but that's not necessarily what the story needs. So I'm not a huge fan of like, I mean, like I was a little self-conscious watching last night because it, it, it is a very emotional performance. Yeah. But, but you really have to... Um, know like when that's appropriate for the story and when to I really I, I believe in not completely I don't want to give you all of me right I want the audience to finish off the feeling yeah. does that make sense it does you know what I mean it does so I mean so yeah, yeah I mean so I, I don't know what I know is like I think this is right for this stage of the story I think okay. this serves the story yeah. So creatively, is the payoff for you when you get to see it with the crowd and you get the reaction? I mean, that's such a weird, it uncomfortable, <laughs> it's like such a strange experience. But I will say, I mean, you know, my boyfriend was there last night and my manager and like to share it with them and also, yeah, to be in a theatre and like a packed theatre, which was so, I haven't been in a packed theatre in years yeah, just because yeah. that's the nature of cinema sadly nowadays. But um, just to hear the laughs and to hear like, the inhales, the, you know, it was really, it was pretty amazing. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm kind of curious from your perspective, because, I mean, you've got really a very diverse range of credits. I mean, you know, sometimes it's a job, sometimes it's stuff you're really committed to, like here with Swearing Jar, but as we go forward in sort of the world of cinema, like, what do you think is the key to sort of just get audiences back? Is it, is it spectacle or is it just story? Like, sort of trying to elevate story as best we can. I mean, I think, personally, you know, I'm, I'm, so, I'm just interested in an honest performance and on an honest storytelling, you know. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I think I think 
there's so much changing right now. It's really scary. You know, it's, it, it's, it is, yeah. it's not scary. It's exciting if we're smart about it. But I do think that, like, you know, a lot of storytelling is moving into our homes. Yeah. It's moving into TV. Sometimes I'm, I'm not sure that necessarily, you know, a story needs to be a three-part thing. I think maybe it... it it was a film, and then yeah. a de- you know, and then a developer was like, "We we want a TV show," and you know, that's the reality of where we are right now. Um, I am interested. I just I want stories that make me think, but also that can give me a new perspective on the world that we're living in today. Because I think you know, we all need it. For sure. And I mean, this is a silly question, but it's one I always like to ask. Yeah. Like, tell me about sort of the younger days. Like, what were the movies that got you sort of invested in this business, business and maybe you want to be an actor? I don't know. I mean, I, I am so in love with movies, and it's like a continuous, it's just like a never-ending love affair. Um, you know, I, when I was a kid, I grew up in Hong Kong, and we had a, so we had this, like, one VHS video rental store. Right, right. And um, the English movies, you know, were were like uh, Reality Bites, That Thing You Do, Romeo and Juliet, Baz Luhrmann's version, right, which I right, completely right. Oh, well, devoured. Course, yeah. um, and that's like where I fell in love with Baz Luhrmann and Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> and um, so it was like that. But then, you know, I mean, I like right now I'm just in love with it with uh, international film. I think it's just so amazing what foreign filmmakers are doing. Sure. Of course, I'm, I adore like, you know, Mike... Um, Mike Mills. Yeah. Um, I adore Mike Mills. I love P.T. Anderson. I love, um, you know, Kenneth Lonergan. I, I love that kind of... I think that's called, sort of what I'm interested in, is like the... Um, where the story elevates, where it's, it's about finding these compelling characters who are telling very honest stories. Yeah, and also they feel like performance-oriented directors, you know. For sure, for sure. Um, so, yeah. Now, I mean, I'm kind of curious because obviously when people on the outside looking into a festival like TIFF, oh, there's the glitz, there's the glamour, there's the parties, but at the same time, you're working, you're talking yeah, to people like yeah. me, you're doing what you have to do to promote your film. Do you get two hours to sort of step away and find a, to watch a movie? Um, unfortunately, this time yeah. I, I won't. I, I really hope so. But um, I got in yesterday and I'll be leaving tomorrow morning. But I'm dying to. I really want to see The Eternal Daughter. I really wanted to see... Oh God, um, I love oh, Joanna Hogg, my God, yeah. Oh my God, I love her so much. And I think it's... That's so ex- exciting to me. Like, Tilda and her and Joanna's... Um, it seems like they, they enjoy working together. For sure. um, I love her movies. I just got chills. Um... But yeah, so, um, but I'm, I'm keeping an eye on, I'm asking everyone like what they're watching and I'm going to make sure that I get to them as soon as possible. So I for can. you as an actor, is the hope going forward to maybe find that creative partner who wants to keep having you back? That would be a dream, yeah, that would be a dream. Because, you know, at the end of a, especially in the last week of like working on, a, on an independent film or at the end of a TV shoot, you know, you have a dialogue with the directors or the showrunners um, that's so seamless and, and really like helps the work. It just makes everything move fast and your brain can move fast and the energy stays where it needs to be. Um, so I would love to do that. You know, I would, I would love to find someone who, who wanted to work that way. Now, I mean, just to put a bow on this, I and mean, this is something I'm always kind of curious about because as an actor, on one end, you want to be creatively engaged, you want to find these right parts and, you know, put on great performances, but at the same time, sometimes these indie films don't pay the rent. So mm-hmm. how do you sort of strike the balance between the job for you and the job to, like I said, pay the rent? I mean, I don't know, you know, yeah, I mean, this is a really <laughs> up and down career. Right. And, you know, I, I mean... I am so desperate to do a play right now, um, and and something that factors into that is like, okay, you know, am I set up for that right now? Um, I don't know. I mean, it really. It, I I feel like every job sort of is a reaction to the next. So I just did a 
uh, I just did this TV show that justified City Primeval and played like... I'm, I'm really looking forward uh, to that. Yeah, it was yeah. so fun. And the character is entirely different to Carrie in Swearing Job. Yeah. You know, she's a con woman who's like working three men, you know, scantily clad and um, smoking dope all the time. Like, just off, like, tiny bit mental, um, which is so fun. You know, and so you, I, and then before that, I played a Mormon. <laughs> so, you know, and then before that, I had this, like, gorgeous, um, just honest, raw character in Carrie. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like when something, as soon as I read a script, and I, I get the feeling like I got with Swearing Jar, where I'm like, oh, please let me. <laughs> oh, please may I. Yeah. Um, then I know that I'm, I've got to do it and, you know, and hopefully one day I'll get to a place where I can have a little more freedom. Yeah, fingers crossed. And well, yeah, if you get to if you get to work on Broadway, you can always pick up a Law and Order in the meantime. You know, yeah, totally. that's that's the job. That's Love the business, Law and right? Order. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Congrats on playing Dark. Thank you. Thank you so much for the time. Yeah. This is a lot of fun. Thank you so much. It's so fun. And don't forget to to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental or purchasing needs this summer as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and Blu-ray needs. <laughs>